Sound the alarms. Folks, we are potentially just days away from getting finally some new Apple hardware. This year, I gotta say it's been a little bit light, but according to Mark Gurman, conventional wisdom, and a number of other sources over the past couple of months, hopefully in literally maybe three days, we should be getting some new hardware. So today, we're gonna talk about what to expect. All right, let's not mess around here. I wanna talk about new iPads because that was the big headline yesterday from Mark Gurman. He said that Apple is preparing to announce new 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pros, presumably with the new M2 chip. These new models are codenamed J617 and J620 and they are long overdue because the iPad Pro has not been touched since April of 2021, so a year and a half ago. And that update, I think we'd all agree, was pretty minor. They swapped out the A12Z for the M1. They gave the 12.9 inch a somewhat iffy mini LED display, and that's about it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're in for a terribly different recipe this time around because Mark Gurman is no longer claiming that the 11 inch would also get a mini LED display. Instead, all we have are some speculations on potentially getting MagSafe for charging, potentially also getting reverse wireless charging capabilities. That's it. Apparently Apple was considering holding an event, but this is too small for that. And it does leave me wondering, what, what is Apple's plan with the iPad Pro? Because I think we all agree that the 2018 model was fantastic. And then since then, for four years, it has just been these weird, minor, almost placeholder updates that every year seem like they're leading up to something bigger. But at this point, four years into this, it seems like Apple just doesn't know how to make the iPad Pro any better. So given that Apple is most likely putting the M2 chip in the iPad Pro, I don't think it would be a stretch to speculate that they would also add it to the Mac Mini. Honestly, at WWDC, a lot of you guys were wondering why Apple didn't just go ahead and plop the M2 chip directly into the 4.5K iMac and the Mac Mini. It would have made a ton of sense. And the Mac Mini, remember, is from the original batch of Apple Silicon launches, which is gonna be two years next month. But I suspect that the reason Apple didn't do those updates then is because the M2 chip being a new chip didn't have a ton of availability. So putting it in two products made more sense in terms of actually being able to ship them. But now it's been a couple of months, the M2 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air are pretty widely available. You can go into a store and pick one up right now if you want, and they're even showing up on sale in many cases. So with it seeming like supply has stabilized, I think that this month makes a lot of sense for putting it in other products like the Mac Mini and the iMac, which realistically are not gonna be as high volume as the MacBooks were anyway. And while, yeah, I don't think the M2 chip is particularly groundbreaking, we saw back in my reviews this June and July that it's pretty mild updates all around, but when you're talking about getting an extra 10, 20, 30% performance here and there for the same price, I think especially for the Mac Mini, which a lot of people love, but hasn't been shown a lot of love because it hasn't changed in two years, that would make for a pretty decent update, I think. And I think that upgrade would be made considerably more tempting when you realize that the M1 Mac Mini has basically not depreciated at all. A quick eBay search shows that the cheapest that people are selling these things for is about $450 or $500. So if you bought one back in November of 2020, you can sell it at a total loss of $100 and buy right back in for more performance. All right, I'll take that deal, absolutely. Now, there is reason to think that Apple would do something like this. If you rewind time back to March of 2020, that is when Apple not only updated the MacBook Air with its final Intel refresh, they also introduced the 2020 refresh to the iPad Pro. So if we're getting iPad Pros this week, it seems pretty fitting that we would also get these Macs. But there are some other things that I've been wondering about, namely the higher end Macs. So Apple hasn't really gotten into a groove in terms of when they're doing these upgrades, but 
the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are going to be turning a year old pretty much any day now. And a lot of us are wondering, is there or where is the M2 Pro and M2 Max? There had been some rumors and speculation that those chips would actually be on a newer 3 nanometer production process that is apparently going into effect starting at the beginning of 2023. However, personally, my take on this has always been, why would they split the M2 generation in half with the base model chip on 5 nanometer plus plus and the higher end chip on 3 nanometer? That doesn't really make any sense to me. And conversely, I don't think it makes a ton of sense for Apple to really keep waiting on the rest of the M2 lineup. I mean, if this three nanometer process is right around the corner, as we are led to believe, and especially given the fact that the A16 is on this four nanometer process, why would Apple drag out what is really a minor spec bump and just a tweak to the original Apple Silicon? It doesn't really make a ton of sense to me, and especially when you talk about this in the lens of the Mac Pro, which we're still waiting on, I don't think it's coming out this year, and I don't think it's coming out with the M2 in it. There is very credible information that I have heard from sources that I've worked with in the past that suggests that Apple actually had a fully working M1-based Mac Pro that was done and ready to ship, but they held off. And I think that a lot of this comes down to marketing and timing. If you've got an M1 chip that is being released on the heels of the M1 Ultra, which is already super duper fast, then you want it to be really, really impressive. But if the timing is such that you're already moving on to M2, and then you're working on your three nanometer M3 process as well, maybe it makes more sense to hold off on what is realistically going to be a once in a decade purchase for a lot of people until it's, you know, absolutely ready. And so I think Apple is most likely going to be waiting until the M3 generation, which seems like it might be a next year type of thing. But if you look at the timeline and you look at how Apple released M1, then we would be all the way in like mid 2024 before we got an M2 Ultra chip. And that just, it just doesn't track. I, I really don't see Apple doing that. It would drag out this generation way too long. <clears throat> anyway, that's my spiel out of the way. There have been a couple of other rumors, including that Apple is apparently working on a docking accessory that would turn the iPad into a smart home display. Now this to me is literally, it's an iMac G4. I love it. I've always loved the iMac G4. And I think honestly, the iPad makes a lot of sense for reincarnating it. Cause let's remember the original iMac G4 Sunflower came in a 15 inch size. So a 12.9 inch iPad would make a lot of sense to reincarnate that idea in a modern way. Oh, please do it. I love the G4 iMac and I would absolutely buy this docking accessory. If for no other reason, then it's really cute and I like it. But this is interesting because we've heard rumors that a future iPad generation could feature MagSafe. In fact, we heard earlier in today's video that Mark Gurman thinks there could be reverse wireless charging in an iPad as soon as this week. So this makes sense to me. In other hardware news, we are still expecting a new iPhone SE 4 with a 6.1 inch display. This one is a rock solid rumor because it comes from my bestie, Ross Young, who I don't think has made a single mistake when it comes to displays. This is what he does and he hits it nail on the head every single time. Basically, you can think of the iPhone SE 4 as the iPhone 10R slash 11 reincarnated with most likely an A16 Bionic at a similar price to today's SE. I think that would make a lot of sense. The current SE design is definitely getting a little long in the tooth. It's arguably eight years old. So let's sunset that guy and move on to something a little bit more modern and hopefully with Face ID. And finally, we do have one last rumor, and I know you guys are super excited about this. It's the Apple TV. Can I get a round of applause? Absolutely, yeah. What a, what a bombshell to end this video on. Anyway, Apple TV is supposedly going to be getting a faster chip. Oh boy. Increased RAM amount for similar gains. A new version of the Siri remote 
and potentially a lower price point. All jokes aside, the Apple TV is probably the best streaming box you can get out there. So I'm probably gonna pick one of those up. I still have, this is embarrassing, the, uh, the Apple TV HD from 2015. Yeah, that, I'm still using that thing. Uh, time for an upgrade for me. I'm waiting for this. But you know what you're not going to wait for is me wrapping up this video because it's happening right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.